Sup YouTube, it's your boy Slide8Fry here. I better try to get this over with quickly. This is going to be a really long one. Uh, I'm just going to briefly mention that my long-awaited Sonic movie review, the final version, had, was uploaded pretty recently, July 29th to be precise. Please, after you're done here, go watch that. It's, uh, I, I already have received some great comments on it. It's well received. It's a good video. My channel isn't just react videos. I also, you know, edit my own videos as well, like that song movie review. Anyways, let's get to it this hour long Scott the Waz. This is going to take forever. <laughs> let's go. God. A room! Yes. I don't know why, but I feel like giving Super Mario 3D World a critical look. Because of a blue border? Hey y'all, Scott here, <laughs> and I just had the craziest dream. I was a virgin talking about Mario, which is ridiculous because I'm a virgin talking about Mario again. <laughs> so Good many Scott. games I can talk about, so many new experiences to have. How about this one? Even when I'm convicted, I still talk about this game. <laughs> Super Mario 3D World was a game I talked about during the dawn of my Peach Fuzz era. We're still in it. But I feel yeah. like it's necessary to give this game more attention. I want to give Mario 3D World another look, Mom. On top of a few <laughs> other things I've talked about in the past, I feel like I can fully commit to some topics that I've merely just brushed upon before. So let's rip the Band-Aid off and dive back into Super Mario 3D World, a collection of words that language was always leading to. Mario <laughs> games used to really mean something when a new one came out, Congress shut down. Each one was a revolution of in its it own Congress right, shut down. invalidating the previous title. The people didn't stop playing yeah, Mario Congress 1 when Mario playing the game like crazy. World came out. Just pure, simple fun. Get to the end of the stage by avoiding the obstacles. At its core, that's what 2D Mario was all about. But okay, then good. Super Mario 64 sure squirted onto store shelves, and it changed everything. Yes, it did. Revolutionizing 3D gaming, this set the standard for not only future Mario games, but video games as a whole. Man, yeah. man has somebody to think. These mm -hmm. wide open a areas to explore too. with a huge moveset at your disposal led to one of the most memorable gaming experiences of all time. Oh, Everybody yeah. remembers their first romp through the castle grounds and walking into the castle themselves and jumping into a painting and collecting their first star. The game fundamentally yeah. had a mission structure. Due to hardware limitations, they couldn't fit 90 plus levels in here like with Super Mario World. They had to craft just a handful of large open stages that housed various different missions within them, which exactly. this is the format That's 3D true. Mario rolled with. At the end of the day, <laughs> 2D and 3D Mario were two vastly different things, 2D being about just ending it all right here, and 3D <laughs> being about exploration. There wasn't always an end to the course. Most levels were open-ended. They were designed with numerous end goals in mind, with missions and different exactly. ways to tackle problems, more so puzzles, much fun more too. solutions. Still haven't graduated. Super Mario 64. Wario Land 3 uh, is the most is the closest thing to that. I mean, you go, you, you there's four different treasures in each level, and e e when you collect a treasure, you beat the level. Um, but uh, unfortunately, it's not open ended because uh, you actually have to, uh, you know, unlock certain conditions to get certain treasures from each level. So, although that's although it's my favorite Wario Land game, I'm just saying it's. It's you get you go back to a lot of levels you already played in that game like you do in Super Mario 64. It was a big deal, but it pretty much killed off 2D Mario for a while. It there. did, the yeah. The Mario Land series on handhelds was sort of the replacement at the time, with yeah. the 2D Mario platformers being remakes or re-releases. Yeah, because that's 64's true. direct follow-up, <laughs> Super Mario Sunshine, pushed the series further in the direction 64 initiated. Its main innovation was plagiarism. Aquafina, call your lawyers. Sunshine was a bit really? more love it or hate it for some. Wow, you hate water? Then what? You <laughs> 70% of your body? <laughs> Nah, it mainly boiled down to the difficulty. Collectibles, level design. Some didn't like the new flood pack for spraying and hovering with water. Why won't you play Mario Sunshine? I'm more of a Pepsi guy. But it's a great game overall. May not have been anything groundbreaking, but this format for 3D Mario was still doing wonders. But I think Nintendo realized Sunshine in 64 lost a few people in the transition from 2D to 3D. It truly hmm. sets us apart from the 40-year-olds. So, okay. in 2006, on the Nintendo DS, we got New Super Mario Brothers, a complete yep. return to form, showing how the 3D games just can't replace the 2D ones. They were two different things. And when sales yeah. came in, that was more obvious than anything. The mm -hmm. 2D games had a far wider appeal. They were so easy to understand. Anybody could pick them up and play them. They needed to come back. Though 3D Mario was still alive <laughs> and well, 
even if it was starting to change. A year yeah. later, in 2007, Super Mario Galaxy released. With everything feeling so grand and epic, this yeah. was the magnum opus for 3D Mario, even if it was eh. quite a bit different from previous titles. Mm -hmm. You're still collecting stars with missions to tackle, but the courses are much more linear. You don't fall into a world with Nintendo saying, I don't know. Most Galaxy <laughs> levels really funnel you in the direction to go, which That's isn't true. a bad thing, it's just different. If anything, it felt like a throwback to how 2D Mario was designed, but still feeling like 3D Mario. It mm. was this amazing inbred cousin. Even if you preferred how 64 oh, and Sunshine works, why Galaxy would you word it like so that? damn cool. Like, I'm wearing overalls in space. <laughs> Go f*** yourself. But after Galaxy, Mario games kept leaning more and more into the style that until it got to the point where 64 and Sunshine's influence on the series was barely recognizable. New Super mm. Mario Brothers Wii, just another new Super Mario Brothers game, now with a multiplayer mode. Super Mario Galaxy so, 2, another phenomenal game, but it was even more linear than Galaxy 1. That's These true. stages truly feel like 2D Mario levels in 3D, which is exactly what the next game went for, Super Mario 3D Land. Mm. The first original 3D Mario game on a handheld was struck. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was gonna mention that it was also more linear because in Super Mario Galaxy 1, you have a main hub world on the, you know, Rosalina's galaxy space station thing with the Lumas. Um, but in Super Mario Galaxy 2, instead of a hub world, you just have a level select screen, um, which is definitely more linear. Although, you know, sometimes I kind of prefer just being able to pick my level instead of having to look around for the level. But, you know, Super Mario 64 did it well. Super Mario Galaxy did it well. And I, I, I haven't played Super Mario Sunshine. I wish I did. But I'm, I'm thinking that's what they did, too. ...exactly like a 2D Mario game. I'd say it's more 2D Mario than 3D, which is mm. perfect for the handheld form factor of the Nintendo True. 3DS. Yeah. Play a few levels, get the three star medals hidden throughout, throw the system in the back seat. All of these games <laughs> and the direction Nintendo was heading with Mario it made sense and felt justified. But a year later, Nintendo released two new Super Mario Brothers games within months of each other. Yeah. New Super Mario Brothers 2 on the 3DS and New Super Mario Brothers U on Wii U. I'm sorry, I just can't get over that they call it New Super Mario Bros. 2. Why is it called 2? The second one was New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Why couldn't you just call the third one for the 3DS New Super Mario Bros. 3D or something? Uh, yeah, it's a 2D game, but it's on a 3DS. Or just call it 3. 3 would have been fine. It would have made more sense than 2. Why 2? It's not the second game, it's the third game! Ugh, sorry, it's just hard for me to get over that. Never played that one, because uh, I didn't get a 2DS until later. Um, but I did play the one on the Wii U. I got the Wii U. I, I, I actually got the Wii U on launch day and was literally the first person in my hometown of Santa Rosa to get one at Target. Um, I guess it's not saying much because not many people were looking forward to the Wii U. <laughs> it didn't sell very well. Switch is doing great, though, obviously. This was when I think everybody had enough. New Super Mario Brothers was great. I mean, I think the four stages of grief are awesome. But each mm -hmm. one was just a new Super Mario Brothers for that console. They yeah. didn't stick out. Each game just felt like a variation of the other. Exactly. And this iterative nature of Mario at the time caused everybody to look back at the past few years asking, what are we doing here? <laughs> new Super Mario Brothers had infected the entire Mario series. The 3D games were starting to feel more and more like the 2D ones, and we were getting less unique characters and art styles. Styles. Mm. It was all becoming just basic generic Mario. These games were all blending <laughs> in with each other. We weren't getting these massive 3D worlds with cool new characters and settings anymore, and the Mario franchise was becoming less and less interesting because of it. New mm. Super Mario Brothers followed this very clean, basic template. They didn't really want to take things in a new direction or introduce new types of worlds or enemies. It was yeah. always about bringing back fan favorite elements from Super Mario Brothers 3 and World and keeping the art style corporate friendly. I'd invest in that. So while these games were all the <laughs> very least good, they were too derivative of previous works to really stand out. There's a reason to play Mario yeah. 3 instead of World. There's pretty much no reason to play New Mario 2 instead of U. And with New Super Mario Brothers mm. U launching with the brand new Wii U console, it didn't really take advantage of its unique features. Unless you count changing the f***ing world as one. Can't do that in The Last of Us. Having a Mario <laughs> game alongside a console launch was nice. That's the best thing I can say about this game. But we were all waiting for that new 3D Mario experience for the system. Yeah. 64, Sunshine, Galaxy, even 3D Land all took advantage of their respective consoles. Mm -hmm. They showed what they were capable of. 3D Land really validated the Nintendo 3DS's 3D display. God only knows what they could do with the Wii U gamepad. Seriously, only God knows nobody else does. The gamepad was famous <laughs> okay. for not having a purpose, so I think we were all looking towards a 3D Mario for Wii U to show us 
My, and we didn't have to wait long to hear about it, as on January 23rd, 2013, a Wii U Direct occurred with then-Nintendo president Satoru Iwata basically telling Rest Wii U owners peace. to dear god like your systems. Even if they didn't have anything to show, Nintendo made it clear that a new 3D Mario done by the Galaxy and 3D Land team was in development for Wii U and would be shown and playable at E3 2013. My god, this game could be called anything. Super Mario Universe? Super Mario Universe again? <laughs> the main idea I saw thrown around was a sequel to the Galaxy series, subtitled Universe, playing off the Wii U name because honestly, there weren't a ton of other options. Speculation ran Hold on, let me wild go back on until that. E3 that June. Expectations were high and my thrown around was a sequel to the Galaxy series, subtitled Universe, playing off the Wii U name because honestly, there weren't Universe Ultimatum Us Weekly Uterus Ugh. A ton of other options. <laughs> Speculation ran wild up I until I saw E3 uterus that there. June. Expectations were high and my virginity was nearing tornado siren levels. The E3 2013 Nintendo Direct started and shortly after, Iwata told us to take a look. Yes! No! The title revealed okay. was Super Mario 3D <laughs> World, a sequel to Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS. Nintendo likes to say they put smiles on their fans' faces. They sure do. Honestly, yeah. I didn't see a ton of people excited, or if they were, it felt like they were going, Okay, okay, new Mario game. Needed that. I don't think anybody was beyond disgusted. I just felt the entire world during this announcement go, Huh. What made 3D Land so great was its use of the 3DS hardware. It was designed for that handheld. So taking mm. that and putting a sequel with the exact same structure on Wii U, it was underwhelming. There's no other way to put it. It didn't look mm. bad, but it screamed just another Mario game. And mm. that was my biggest issue with it. It had that plastic basic art style that the new Super Mario Brothers games had. And while it was mm. running in HD, the galaxy and the Wii still looked better. It had a superior art hmm. style and lighting. Just comparing the lava in this scene from the trailer to that game shows the problem here. What the fuck? There was no fanfare to this announcement. Huh. Even the trailer felt like it didn't care. This wasn't a big moment. Nintendo wasn't treating this like Mario's next big step. This felt like a press release made a trailer. Mario's in 3D mm. on the Wii U. They were the first ones brave enough to do it. The trailer <laughs> itself is fine. It just came out at a bad time. There was legitimate Mario fatigue. So many games that felt too similar to each other, all releasing back to back within the last four years. This new Mario game needed to be on the same level as Mario Galaxy in terms of a big idea that wowed. But the trailer just showed Didn't. green planes, ice world, lava, some new enemies here and there. But is that really enough to make the game stand out? We were getting to the point where seeing mice got us excited. Like, wow, that's new! Like, just something original <laughs> for Make the pipes clear, huh? What? They did show off some more unique elements, like the cat suit, the game's new power-up, the Wii U gamepad functionality, letting you rub gophers. Like, I can't already do that. What? Multiple playable <laughs> characters, Luigi, Peach, Toad, all with unique characteristics based on their appearances in Super Mario Bros. 2, and yeah. you can play four-player multiplayer with them. An awesome addition, being the first mainline 3D Mario game with four-player co-op, but mm -hmm. it's already so similar to the new Super Mario Bros. games, and those already had multiplayer. Mm -hmm. If anything, this didn't help differentiate the game. This just brought 3D Mario that much closer to new Super Mario Brothers. 3D mm. World was warmly received. The people who got to demo the game said it was a ton of fun, but these are gaming journalists we're talking about here. Do they know how to have fun? I didn't hate what I was really? seeing. It was just hard to get excited when it felt like Nintendo wasn't even excited. This wasn't the game they needed at the time. It felt like a very ho-hum announcement. They weren't immensely proud or confident. Yeah. It was just a new Mario game. Buy it. You can tell many fans were upset that 3D World wasn't a regular 3D Mario due to them releasing a YouTube video during E3 showing Showing how the game does in fact have camera control. Oh, come on, man. That's a technicality. This game just didn't really do I didn't even know it when it was revealed. I actually didn't even know you can, you know, rotate the gamepad to change the camera angle. I didn't even know that. I mean, I was obviously going to play it. I mean, look at me. But it felt like a 3D <laughs> Mario that was created just to put out something quickly on Wii U. Rather it probably than was. something created out of a lust to do something creative and new with Mario. It's like they just took what they did with 3D Land and just rolled with it. It was the yeah. latest 3D Mario game they made, so it was probably the easiest to do a new 3D Mario in that style. You just take 3D Land, spruce it up in HD, put it on the Wii U, boom. That's how game development works. Those <laughs> lazy swine in Nintendo thought they could just make a video game when I wanted a video game in space. But it turns out all life problems can be and will be solved on October 1st, 2013. The second trailer for the game kicked off an October Nintendo Direct, okay. with this one blowing everybody away. 
While it may not live up to previous 3D titles, at the very least, 3D World looked like an actual video game instead of the product of Nintendo hitting Make Mario on the keyboard. <laughs> so much personality, big band jazz music played against cutscenes, boss fights, yeah. new power-ups, crazy I love the design. hard this rock in the game, just too. just the 3D new Super Mario Bros. game. It showed a lot of that creativity and passion we came to expect from a big 3D Mario like this. It's just in a more simplified form now. All mm -hmm. edited incredibly well into the trailer, too. It's pretty clear why this trailer got everybody excited, and this one started a revolution. Back in uh, 2013, the game was initially set for a December 2013 launch, which was bizarre for a Mario title. The Month of Christ! That's a Xenoblade thing. They ended up swapping the initial release months with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, I finally confirming a November freeze. 22nd, 2013 release date, alongside Mario & Luigi Wii remotes coinciding with the release month. Nintendo also uploaded an overview trailer for the game a few weeks later, but just called it the October trailer. Then what the hell was this? I guess Nintendo was really worried that people didn't know Motley Boss Blob was in the game, so they released another trailer a week before Motley release, pretty much Boss spoiling any Blob. secrets the title had to offer. I mean, that's cool, but I doubt they would actually have Molly Boss Blob in it. Those tricky bitches! The trailer showed <laughs> off almost all major secret unlockables. Like, Ooh, yep. why? I guess because 3D World had a ton of competition on release day. Not only was Nintendo releasing it alongside The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds on 3DS, not only was it launching the same day as the Xbox One and its launch games, mm. but it was releasing the same day as Mario Party Island Tour. And the Xbox One never recovered. 3D <laughs> World was met with critical acclaim across yeah, the board. Yeah, the PS4 was the announced of all the November of, was released a month before. 10 out of 10s were thrown around, calling it the reason to buy a Wii U. Must have been a 10 out of 10 minus. Nintendo mm. really pushed the game, making YouTube videos where they didn't know how to capture their own gameplay. They were serious. Commercials, which just highlighted the problem with Nintendo ads during the Wii U era. Lights, mm. a child on the couch, playing Wii U, game on the screen. Game world expands to living room. Mom satisfied, dad's like, whoa! Narrator tries to make anything sound appealing to your parents. Clear pipes are in this family fun Mario 3D Wii U only for the Wii U scene. I played this game at launch and was- Hey, here's a joke. That trailer is fake. It never existed. You know why? Because the Wii U never had any ads when it came out. I mean, I'm serious. I remember when the Wii U came out, and, you know, when the Wii U came out, I was still living with my mom. And, um, she liked TV. I don't. I like Hulu, Netflix, whatever. Although, at the time, I used Hulu with the ads version. I have the ads-free version now on my Disney Plus bundle. But, anyways... I would see advertisements for the PS4, the Xbox One. Um, I would never, ever see ads for the Wii U. It just, they just never came out. So, where did you find that footage? Where, where did you mysteriously find that magical Wii U ad? You must have found it in some alternate universe because they never advertised the game. The only ads I remember for the Wii U are when it launched in 2012, they're advertising Nintendo Land. And uh, in uh, 2016, late 2016, I used to work for a company called Market Source selling cell phones at Target. And I saw the ad for Paper Mario Color Splash. And it played repeatedly. And, it, you know, the reason why I saw it is because I worked in the electronics section and the TVs there would typically just show different ads and stuff. And uh, occasionally it would show Paper Mario Color Splash, which... I liked it when it showed that because it was actually a fun ad and it was different than having to deal with, you know, ads advertising modern pop music and crap. But anyways, yeah, that we that that ad for 3D World I didn't, doesn't exist. It's fake. Nintendo never advertises their games. So excited to do so. I followed everything up until the game's release, and it all looked like so much crazy fun, and I played through the whole thing, completed as much as I possibly could, and was satisfied knowing that this was an excellent Mario game. Though, as time went on, I became much more critical of the game, considering I didn't remember a ton of it. It wasn't that memorable. Mm. So I decided to take a critical second look at it, and now I'm going to take a critical third look at it, because... I need to up my credit score. You'll be amazed what links with that. Here it is, Super Mario 3D World. This score. title is horrible. It's bad enough the logo is an exact copy of 3D Lands, but with a cattail photoshopped on, but I've heard so many people get this name wrong, getting it confused with 3D Land in the original Mario World. It makes me so angry. Why does the background look like a transparent PNG? It the does. Is very what appealing. the fuck's I'll with give that? It that? But to the normal bystander, what makes this Mario game different from this one, you know? The galaxy, he's in space. Sunshine, water pack. This one, it's just the 
Mario game having a ball. I mean, I guess there's two of them and 50% of the room is a cat. I don't know. It's just <laughs> fun Mario adventure. That's what this says, which is exactly what this says. And this says, oh, this was back whenever. Seriously, I don't understand why it looks like um, a transparent background from Photoshop. Like, why does it look like that? I, I, you know, I never noticed that until they released the new port on Switch, Bowser's Fury. I, when I first bought this game on Wii U back then, I, I guess I just never paid attention to that. I, I looked at everything else. Maybe that's what they were hoping for. They would get lazy with the background and just le leave a transparent background there <laughs> on Photoshop, you jackasses. For anybody would see the Nintendo Network logo on a Wii U box, they shit their pants. I cover it up for that reason. When this box <laughs> came out, many assumed this meant online multiplayer. In reality, it's just me for support. What a cock to you. Should have included the text, it's yeah. not what you think. The back it's of the not box what you has think, to specify yeah. anything new here, which almost makes it sound like this is a re-release of an old game with new content. <laughs> We'll get to that. There's so many parallels yeah. between this and Mario 3D Land. The box design, the yeah. game disc and card file in the same format. Even the manual takes design cues from 3D Land. Except the spine that takes cues from Mario Galaxy 2. I wish my spine did. Well, let's give this game what? a third chance. I thought it was excellent the first time, just good the second time, so it better be f***ing atrocious this time or I'm pissed. Really? Atrocious? Why? <laughs> it's a Photoshop transparent background! Mario to say that. <laughs> Super Mario 3D World kicks things off. Meow. Off with a Greek tragedy. The kings all here during fireworks and they notice a pipe. Clear pipe. This isn't the Mario I know. They fix it and out pops a Sprixy. I actually like that they that finally for the first time that I can recall in any Mario game you actually see the Mario Brothers for once be plumbers. You for once see them be plumbers. You never see them do it. You see pipes, you see them go through them, but you can clearly see other characters can do that. So for once, you see them be plumbers and they fix a pipe. For once. Princess, a fairy that is begging for help. Bowser captured the other ones. This yes. is a direct reference to those 2D art pieces shown before each world in Super Mario 3D Land. But this is the only time it ever happens in this game, which is just kind of strange. It's yeah. I. It She's my preferred, that Sprixie is my preferred character in uh, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, because she's technical. A picky bitch. Bowser squirts out of the pipe, and I have to say, I love the more classic cartoony style 3D World Ghost. Fix it, and out pops a Sprixie princess, a fairy that is begging for help. Bowser captured the other ones. This is a direct reference to those 2D art pieces shown before each world in Super Mario 3D Land, but this is the only time it ever happens in this game, which is just kind of strange. It is I, a picky bitch. Bowser <laughs> squirts out of the pipe, and I have to say, I love the more classic cartoony style 3D World goes for. Bowser's animations here and how Mario and Luigi fixed the clear pipe feels straight out of a Saturday morning cartoon. So Bowser's <laughs> kidnapping fairies now. Nothing wrong with that. The gang falls in the <laughs> pipe and into the Sprixy Kingdom. Could you tell? That's why the boxer refers to this as a whole new world. This isn't the Mushroom <laughs> Kingdom, whole it's the Sprixy Kingdom, which I feel like is a huge missed opportunity. At no point in this game does it feel like this isn't the Mushroom Kingdom, making it a big deal that we're not in the Mushroom Kingdom anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel like they could have run with the idea that we're in a completely different area now by introducing strange new environments. It's a wonderful little... Yeah, Super Mario Land on the Game Boy did a better job of showing that you're not in the Mushroom Kingdom. There's not, uh, I mean, not because of Goombos, because they still look like Goombas, but the uh, Koopas explode and just different enemies you never see in any Mario game ever since. Detail how the characters have this urgency right after the opening cut. Not to mention the terrain you're on. There's more desert, there's more... Um, uh, ancient ruins and temples and stuff, but yeah, continuing on. That scene on the world map, they did that in 3D land, but now the world map is its own thing. You can yeah. roam around it like a mini level. It's incredibly that's limited true. though. You can jump and sort of run, but that's about it. There are yeah, a few coins scattered throughout and very minor secrets to uncover, but this yeah, feels like they true. wanted to give the game something that felt like a hub world, like Peach's Castle or the Comet Observatory, and I can see the potential in this world. To be honest, I actually... I don't know why that is, but for some reason, I actually really like how they did the worlds on this. I, I can't really fathom the reason. I think it's just because, like, 
you still go to the level immediately from on top of the world. You have to go through other doors and stuff, like in Mario's, like in Peach's Castle or whatever. I just have ever since playing this game and you know, recording, uploading footage and all that stuff. Um, way back, unfortunately, I didn't record. I didn't upload all of my gameplay of it though, unfortunately. But anyways. I just had always liked how this worked. You're, you're walking around like a level, kind of, but you're still selecting levels. It's it's hard for me to explain, but I've all I for for some reason really like this style. I don't know why. I'm not entirely sure why, but I just really do. Map style. It's genuinely really intuitive, and the fact they hide a few small little secrets here and there shows that it could be so much yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. But that's all it does. It just makes me think this could be so much more. Mm -hmm. like, imagine if you had the full move set you had in the game's actual levels. Imagine if there were small platforming yeah, challenges, true. That would make more it secrets to find. No, it's basically a new Super Mario Brothers map that you can freely walk around. Cool that we have that ability, yeah. but it just makes me wish they did more with it. On to the first stage. Shocking. Green Plains, <laughs> we have some control of Mario. Your movement is locked to eight directions only, which is less than 3D lands, which still only had 12 directions you could point Mario in. It just snaps you into the rough area you're pointing in, which isn't a huge deal. It isn't mm. like the Link's Awakening remake, where Link just jumps from direction to direction. Nah, that's <laughs> an animation to make it look really smooth, but it still likes the precision you got in previous games. This was because 3D World was designed with the lowest common denominator in mind, the Wii Remote on its side. The game supports mm. a ton of control schemes. The Wii U Gamepad, Pro yeah. Controller, Wii Remote and Nunchuck, the Wii Classic Controller and Classic Controller Pro, or just the Wii Remote on its side. This is disgusting. Ever tried to play a 3D <laughs> game with a Wii Remote on its side? Ever kill a ghost? To make for an even playing field, <laughs> even if you have a controller with a full analog stick, you still get the hate way movement, which again, isn't a big deal. I don't really care. It's just kind of an odd quirk of the game. If anything, the eight-way yeah. movement was a smart move considering how the rest of the game is designed. Jumping on a Goomba, if you had 360 directions to jump in, it's more likely you could miss. Here, if it's is basically a, a 2D game in 3D, I think the limited directions make sense. Mario mm. retains a lot of the classic 3D moves he's had throughout the years. Long jump, side somersault, yeah. wall jump, ground pound, roll, it all feels perfectly fine, but you, you still also have to hold crawl. the run button, which is taken from the 2D games in 3D land. Mm. 3D World has this weird dash mechanic where you hold the run button and after a few seconds of running you get this burst of speed and many yeah. times I find myself running in circles so I don't trigger the burst when I don't want to. You get this new power jump by ground pounding into a jump. You can spin and jump like in Mario Sunshine. The game overall controls great. It's a Mario game. I think yeah. they're legally supposed to. It just has a <laughs> few little things that are a 3D world only shtick, but if you're not feeling one character, you have an endless supply of others to try. I never got to that page in the dictionary. Mario, Luigi, <laughs> Peach, and Toad, each playable in any level, each with their own characteristics. Mario is the all-around bag of wonder bread. Luigi is slippery, but jumps higher. Peach is slow, but hovers in the air. And Toad is fast, but just can't get it up. Having all these characters is great, and with just playable here, it forces the story to be at least a little different from the norm. I've personally always been just run-of-the-mill Mario. I like knowing what I'm getting into. Playing as Luigi... I'm gonna have to speak to an attorney. Playing as Peach is cheating. You yeah, know, where am I more monogamous in Mario 3D World? And so, I mean, yeah, he's fast, good for him. He's great for when you just want to end it all. I think this character <laughs> lineup is fantastic, though. Far yeah. better than the new Super Mario Brothers multiplayer yeah, lineup, exactly. consisting of that, this, and Yellow Toad. And just the fact they mm -hmm. all have unique attributes is the cherry on top. Ooh. I mean, I may prefer Mario, but if you can play as one character well, you're bound to at the very least be decent at the rest, and it shakes things up. The character's yeah. abilities are really well rounded, though I do wish they were implemented into the level level design at some points. A handful of stages include these character-specific switches where if you want one of the collectibles, you have to hit the switch. Yeah, that character. It's... I don't know. I just feel like this is a little lame. It's not fun. I don't throw a party when I find the switch as a specific character. All this does is prolong the game time for a sort of dumb reason as I have to exit the level, select the character I need, hit the I switch, and then complete too. level a set character. I, I, really I don't would like have preferred it. instead of a basic switch, a small mini challenge would be there in which a specific character would excel at, like a crumbling bridge Toad could zoom past or high platforms only Luigi could reach. Because yeah. the reason you'd implement these switches is to ensure the players at the very least try different characters. But if you're going to do that, show why they want to try those different characters by showcasing their abilities. Very good point, it's actually. It's also a bit annoying how you can't switch characters after you die. Before any single stage begins, you have an audible countdown asking, are you sure about this? And you can pick <laughs> your character, randomize it, that's nice. But after I die, I would have liked if during the screen showing your life counter going down, you had the same character select pop up. I mean, yeah. if I'm playing the game for the first... I believe in Super Mario Brothers 2... 
if you die, you get to still choose your character again. So why not in this game? First time, how would I know which character would be best for the stage I'm about to play? If I die, there's True, a good yeah. chance I want to swap characters to better fit the level, exactly. which is something at the very least you could do after a game over in Super Mario Bros. 2. But something Super Mario Bros. 2 didn't have was multiplayer, which is 3D World's biggest focus. The yeah. first multiplayer 3D Mario adventure, because Galaxy 1 and 2 only gave birth the single and a half player. Oh wow, <laughs> pregnant with twins? Kinda. 3D World has four player multiplayer where each player has equal footing. You're all playing characters with the same worth in Toad, and you're all getting to the flagpole uh, at the end. The idea of a 3D Mario with multiplayer like this harkens back to the rumblings of two player support in Mario 64 and its cancelled sequel. Mm. Running around as both Mario and Luigi in a 3D environment was something everybody who played a 3D Mario thought of, and at E3 2009, Nintendo announced they were taking that step. But we admit we haven't quite figured out how to move him into a fourth dimension. But Fourth. that number, four, that's the key to Mario's next surprise. I was f***ing befuddled when they announced that. Like, of course the Wii Play guys found the fourth dimension. Now they announced four-player multiplayer and new Super Mario Bros. Wii, which oh, was yeah, so duh. exciting at the time. But in practice, I found it more frustrating than fun. You'd always run into each other, so a 3D Mario with multiplayer felt like this idea was finally fully realized. Hey, so uh, just real quick, um... I did have a few, super, uh, back when the game was new in 2009, the new Super Mario Bros. Wii, I actually had a, a few four-player playthroughs. I had more videos, but didn't want to keep going with them because uh, I had friends who sucked at the game. But um, my best friend at the time, unfortunately we're not friends anymore, but maybe there, that door can open again in the future. But anyways... Um, we actually have an entire two-player playthrough of New Super Mario Bros. Wii, and we play fluently and beautifully as a team. Um, the only problem is the footage I got from us playing World 9 just isn't available. Uh, something, I think, happened to my external hard drive, and it was gone, but at least I got all eight, all eight of the main worlds. And in fact, my most popular video on my channel, which somehow, I, I don't still don't know how... Is, it is as popular as it is, it has, a, it has a million views, is of him and I playing um, our 37th playthrough of the game, uh, our 37th video of the game, and it's him and I playing um, Bowser Jr. before the final Bowser Castle. Still don't know why it has the most views on my channel by far, but happy it does. It probably is one of the reasons why my channel is monetized. <laughs> you just have more space in 3D and more opportunities for creatively horrendous things to occur. Of course, yeah. I don't think the casual audience really understood that. I think this and this both look the exact same to them. <laughs> they don't really see the value in a multiplayer Mario in a 3D space compared to a 2D one like this commercial sells it. But for plastic gropers like us, this is easily <laughs> the best multiplayer Mario platformer. The 3D space so, yeah. gives each player far more room to do their yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. You can still cause chaos if you're from that side of history. The thing <laughs> is, though, the multiplayer is fun. It's fun to be able to play a whole ass Mario game with eight hands, but I wish it was all more fleshed out. Basically, mm. the multiplayer is just play the game with others. There's no extra modes or anything focused on it. The core mm. game alone is fun enough with friends, but it's the most fun when you're going through the game on a new save file. Because if I want to out of nowhere just play 3D World with some friends and play a later level, I have to hop into a save file that's already beaten and with all the collectibles already nabbed. You still get points for grabbing them, but with them being literally already obtained and transparent, it just makes them less enticing. The level's been beaten already. Why are we going through it again? <laughs> then afterwards, just run around the world map and try to find another stage to play just for the sake of playing a stage. It's not that bad. I mean, at the end of the day, why are you playing video games? To do something fun. Just because mm. these stages are already beaten, it doesn't really matter because it's just about having fun with friends. But half of the fun of Mario 3D World's multiplayer is that you're going through the game completing it together. Yeah. It makes it when you miss a collectible, when you miss the top of the flagpole, when you lose all those lives more engaging. So to get that experience with this game, you can't can't go to a multiplayer free play mode or something. You pretty much always have to start a new save file. And there's only so many times you can do that until it gets ridiculous. There's this mechanic that tallies up the point total of each player at the end, which I think is fantastic. 2D Mario games have had a point system forever, and it's pretty much never amounted to anything. Yeah. It's a holdover from arcade games, and honestly, by Mario 3, they should have axed it. But 3D mm, World probably. uses it for multiplayer, and it's literally just to spark fights amongst players. All you get for winning a stage is a useless crown in the next one, and you can lose it, others can steal it. It may seem lame to not have a legitimate reward for winning, but it's a smart move on the developer. Part. Yeah, it turns 3D something. World into a much more human-centered multiplayer game. Mm. They know how people act, and it just makes the whole experience that much more fun and hilarious that everybody's... Yeah, the thing about 
a score system in Mario is that, yeah, it is it is kind of pointless. At least in Sonic games, if you score 50,000 points, you get an extra life. Although that started with the second game. Fighting over a crown that amounts to nothing. They should write a book about war. So I love the points mechanic. I love multiplayer in this game. Sorry, Two players if you just want to get stuff done. Three to four if you want to watch the world burn. But huh. I just wanted more options when it comes to multiplayer. I would have liked a coin battle mode where it gives you a couple of stages where you and friends fight for the most coins. Or just a free for all one where they give you a string of five levels where the collectibles are still glowing in there. And <laughs> at the end you fight a boss and they total up the points for the entirety of the stages all together. In fact that would have been a really cool touch after you beat 3d world in multiplayer to have it tally up all the scores from all the levels to see who won everything uh, that That'd would be require cool. literally everybody to play every stage together with no breaks or anything but uh, it would have been cool they could have at the very least done yeah. that at the end of each world but speaking of which the game is separated via eight worlds with four special worlds after beating the main game yeah. seven sprixy princesses are at the end of the first seven worlds awaiting their rescue they all have different hairstyles seven seven eight four two eight five each map has a certain <laughs> theme but the levels inside don't follow it mostly usually the first few stages correlate with the map theme but mostly you're getting a dentist appointment i don't know what i'm gonna get you have yeah. scoliosis are my data really that bad i mean that keeps the game <laughs> crazy for you have no idea what stage you're getting next but it does make the game feel less like a world at the end of the day it just feels like a string of random good mario stages nothing wrong with that i think that strengthens the game overall as soon as you said that i was thinking about that poliosis joke from jeff dunham even though that's like from so long ago now, 2006 or something. My wife and I watch that special every once in a while on Netflix. Oh. It's just one idea for one level, and then a completely different one the next. I don't yeah, care for desert cool. levels a ton, but in World 2, that's themed around a desert. It doesn't matter. There's only one desert stage. But I <laughs> think this decision, while good, does add to making 3D World's actual levels Ooh. a bit forgettable. Each one is so short, they're all about getting to the end and reaching the flagpole, just like Mario 3D Land and the entire new Super Mario Brothers series. It's Ooh. a tried and true formula that is designed perfectly here. But that doesn't mean it leaves much of an impact on me. Mm. On top of that, while the control is all fine and good, this game has some pretty wonky moments where you just don't know where you're jumping. 3D World at its core is still 3D Land, and that game was tailor-made with the 3DS in mind. That's why it had the camera angles it did to emphasize the 3D effect. That display made precise jumps easier to perform. 3D World doesn't really do a lot to change this. It still feels like it was designed with a stereoscopic 3D display in mind, and that kind of hurts it a bit. Numerous times, I'll jump for a platform and fall to my death because I thought I was lined up with it, and the camera's so fixed that you can't really do a ton about it. You can move to the left, the right, and it's like I'm really there. The camera features are limited, so much that I forgot they're even a thing. Especially the gyro camera. Who used that? The, I didn't the even know that angle was there. isn't the biggest issue, as it's always at the ideal spot at a fixed angle, and the depth perception isn't a huge problem as well. It's just obvious this game's core was designed with a different system in mind. And that extends <laughs> to the courses themselves, which feel like expanded 3D land levels. They're bigger in scope and feel less claustrophobic, but they follow the same formula. It's the same <laughs> as 3D land, though a bit spruced up. The levels <laughs> are all basically obstacle courses, and the art design really sells that concept. It's like Everything's from the show Wipeout. It all oh. looks artificial, which I don't know why. All the characters have this plastic shine to them. The grass looks like AstroTurf. The level design <laughs> itself looks like a collection of blocks put in a it very does. well thought out way. But at the end of the day, it's still just a collection of blocks. These stages all take place in the sky on floating platforms. The world map shows them as these little diorama looking things. And when you think of it from that perspective, the design makes a lot more sense. But why wouldn't they go all the way with it? Nintendo loves experimenting with arts and crafts yeah. art styles. And that trend started around this time. It's so good. if they wanted 3D World to look like a diorama, why not go all the way with it? If you want everything to look artificial, give it a look like Yoshi's Crafted World or something. Yeah. Instead, it's this weird balance between incredibly artificial and normal looking Mario game. Mm. That's not to say the game looks bad. I mean, it looks disgusting. Disgustingly clean. Everything in this game feels <laughs> fully crafted and not show any imperfections. You can't see any jagged polygons or anything. It's all as smooth as can be. Yeah. Like a cigarette. In more ways than one. 3D World may be very slick looking, but it doesn't really wow me, you know? Like, you can draw a perfect circle. There's not much detail, but it's the best damn circle around. The guy next to you may draw an imperfect circle with some rough wavy lines, but they put all this detail around it. Like, yeah, that other one's perfectly round, but this one's more fun to look at. 3D World feels like it was engineered to be as inoffensive to look at as possible, but because of that, it's not that interesting to look at. Like this bridge. 
Who cares? Why not have more details, more NPCs, more backgrounds? Something like this stage that's supposed to be an homage to Super Mario Kart. The background's mostly just an empty void. Why not add uh, stuff like point. a stadium Very or more point, detail? Yeah. Like the original Super Nintendo course has more detail in the background. Yeah. But this is all probably so then 3D World runs flawlessly at 60 frames per second. The Perhaps. simplistic art design is probably here to keep the game running perfectly with such high polygonal 3D models. But just comparing it to Mario Galaxy, a game that also ran perfectly, this game just has so much more oomph to the mm. art design. Albeit mm. running on less demanding hardware, but True. just comparing these two, even though 3D World has a superior resolution, Galaxy just looks better. To me, mm. 3D World looks too basic most of the time. Mm. There are loads of moments it shines, like the water here. Oh, don't mind Nintendo, they made the greatest looking water in a video game as the background for the Bowser in a car level. The game genuinely looks really good. All the colors pop and many times the art design comes fully together. Mm. It just feels like it's made for specific lighting, specific styles, specific instances, because when you take this art style out of its comfort zone, you get the stage sprawling savanna. The lighting here just really highlights how unpleasant and the characters look with this plastic feel. And then you get to this segment where the camera goes behind the character, really the only time in the game when it does this, it's a cool nod to the more open 3D Mario games. But then you see this disgusting level of popping, and it's not even like they're trying to hide it. It shows much of this game was designed with the fixed camera in mind. 3D World is supposed to be consumed in a very specific way, and that's not a bad thing, but I see these little glimpses of moments where it feels like the developers wanted to make a grander adventure, but had to reel things back due to how limiting the 3D World template is. But they really took those limitations and made a damn good game out of them. What the hell? Yeah. After all that, I like this game? <laughs> the person you love the most is the one you're most critical of. Super Mario 3D <laughs> World has some of the most refined level design of... To go along with what he said, if you, if you are a big fan of something, you are uh, absolutely allowed to be critical of it. <clears throat> For example, um, Marvel, Marvel vs. DC. There are people out there who think that every single... Marvel movie is perfection. Are you kidding me? Every single one of them is perfection? That's not the case at all. Are you kidding me? My goodness. To really like something, you can't just become a cult and say it can do no wrong. You have to at least appreciate... Yeah, You have to at least be critical when they do something wrong. If you really care about something, you will be critical of it if they mess up. Kind of like how I think a strong marriage, I, I think uh, if a married couple never argues, it's not a strong marriage. They just don't care. But if they actually get into arguments every once in a while, then yes, they care enough to actually to criticize each other, explain why this is wrong, that is wrong, and so on. I mean, unless you argue for the sake of arguing, which is not cool at all any Mario game. Everything is meticulously placed in such an intelligent way to make for well thought out and fun courses. But that's all they are, and I'm sick of it! My problems <laughs> come in with the sheer impact of them. There aren't really any levels in this game where I go, damn, after beating them. It's always, uh, what a nice level that was, which is what I thought was <laughs> Super Mario 3D Land, and to a much lesser extent, the new Super Mario Brothers series. I mean, for those games, I forget their level designs for breakfast. 3D World uh, stages are so quick and to the point, and I remember a chunk of them, but most of them are fun in the moment, and then I move on with my life. Like, mm -hmm. I can't think of a single bad one, but who goes off? Oh, yeah, the ant stage. It's good platforming, but that's I all do. it really I like the ant stage. It doesn't leave much of an impression on me other than this is fun. Though that does make this. I actually missed the music from the ant stage. It was so good awesome. Mario Adventure. Even the best Mario games have stages I just don't really want to play sometimes. This one, mm, not so much. That's true. I don't leap out of my seat excited for most levels, but I'm more than happy to play them, which is more than what I can say about some of the other games. Even Galaxy, my favorite game of all time, has a few iffy ones in there. Each level is fairly short and encompasses mm. a unique gimmick to call its own, but one of the defining ones across the whole game is clear pipe. It was implemented because the developers wondered what Mario looked like while inside the pipes. These are interesting <laughs> ways of traversal. You're constantly moving and can only change your direction when you get to a fork in the road. They do a few fun things with them, but what 3D World usually does is introduce a thing, use that thing, and then discard that thing before it gets stale, or in some cases, reach its full of potential. When each level has its own gimmick, whether it's really focusing on clear pipes, or soccer ball bombs, silhouettes, the giant rideable dinosaur plessy, a limited time mm -hmm. limit, switchboard, circus elements, it's really fun and keeps things fresh though it makes me wish these elements were expanded upon. They mm. could have done so much more with all of these awesome ideas, but they didn't in exchange for more ideas, which is great because that means no idea necessarily overstays its welcome. Yeah. It just leaves me wanting more, 
which is probably the preferred outcome. But even the best stages here don't really give me the same feeling the best stages of other Mario games did. These are perfectly designed levels that are loads of fun to play through. There's literally nothing wrong with their layouts, and it's a flawless game to use as an example for game design. But be honest, just looking at both of these, what would you remember more? I've said it before, but each level's short length could have been expanded upon. Like, combining all three of the Grassy Plains areas to make one giant area would have made the whole Grassy Plains segment more memorable. Most <laughs> stages have three green stars to find and a stamp, which are the main collectibles. Green stars are just star coins or star medals from New Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario 3D Land. It's just find all three hidden in the stage, and stamps they're just a fourth green star. Another collectible <laughs> with this one giving you black and white pieces of art which you were able to use in Miiverse posts on Wii U. You know, originally you would see posts after oh. a beating level and on the world map while also seeing ghost Mies appear in stages you've already beaten, showing people from around the world's playthrough at the level. The ghost Mies feature was kinda cool, but it was sort of Nintendo's way of saying, here's online multiplayer in the smallest of fonts. But the green stars are really fun to collect because yeah. many are well hidden or tricky to get to. I found the comet medals in Mario Galaxy 2 to never be hard to nab, they were pretty much always directed obtainable. I think the green stars mm. strike a great difficulty balance. Most of them are easy to find, but hard to <coughs> grab, or hard to find, but easy to grab. I just find mm. them yeah. being green stars to be odd. Uh, green stars mainly appeared in Galaxy 2 as bonus stars after you completed the main game. Here, That's they're true, just yeah. star metal replacements, and I feel like they did that to make the game have more in common with the likes of Mario Galaxy. What mm. are you talking about? You're still collecting the stars, and you need them to progress sometimes, just like in the real 3D Mario games. God damn, Nintendo! You know exactly how to shut my stupid f***ing mouth! You have a few diversions here. <laughs> Here and there in the form of the mystery box and Captain Toad yeah. stages on the world map. These are easy ways to get a bunch of green stars. The mystery box stages involve a gauntlet of multiple challenges in a row. You have to kill all the enemies or complete the puzzle within 10 seconds and move right on to the next one, and you have to do it all in one go to complete the stage. Once again, the concept of these were taken from 3D Land, but they're expanded upon in a fun way here. They were almost always incredibly easy pieces of what felt like filler, if I'm being honest. But in 3D World, they can be intense and difficult, but incredibly rewarding to pull off in these gauntlets. The Captain Toad stage Okay. I mean, they're fine. These levels are pretty little easy. puzzle boxes you can rotate fully around. You have to collect all the green stars, but you can't jump, so you have to figure out how to traverse the environment. And I like these, but I don't feel like they add much. They're brilliant ideas, enough to get a full game, Captain yep. Toad Treasure Tracker, yep. but that's what they feel like. Ideas that are from their own game. I feel like they're here because 3D World really likes variety. Throwing a ton of ideas out there just to make it look like this game has it all. Like what's with <laughs> the baseballs? They just appear in seemingly random levels. You can toss them around and it's like cool. Why? why? That's it the thing with 3D World. It doesn't really have a theme and it used set to its advantage, but the variety isn't nearly as cool as if there was a theme. Like Kirby Planet Robobot is my favorite Kirby game. The game's it's a amazing. More general Kirby game, Kirby Triple Deluxe. With Both Robobot sci-fi theme. Theme, I feel like any idea that it has creatively ties into that and makes it much more creative. I like when games have themes comparative to when they don't. Pretty I think Kirby Triple Deluxe, um, for the longest time I thought Kirby Superstar was the greatest Kirby game ever made, but when I finally played Kirby Triple Deluxe, that game beats it. Kirby Triple Deluxe I think is the greatest Kirby game ever made, especially with the introduction of the uh, fighting, uh, Smash Bros. fighting style multiplayer with Kirby's abilities leading to its own series of games. Um, Kirby Planet Robobot is also incredible. Uh, it's probably my second favorite Kirby game. Uh, my third favorite Kirby game is probably Kirby Star Allies on the Switch. Um, I really missed that game. I lost it with my original Switch. Uh, I have a new Switch now, but I haven't gotten that game for it. But yeah, but Kirby Superstar is still up there. Kirby Superstar is still incredible. But um, yeah, those take off your nostalgia goggles. There are newer Kirby games that play just like Kirby Superstar, but actually make great improvements upon it. Kirby Triple Deluxe is a prime example of it, and Kirby Planet Robot has some new ideas with those big robots. So, anyways, back to Mario. Sorry. The world has cats, but it's not really a theme as cats. much as it's just kind of a part of the logo and a power-up in the game. Yeah, some enemies are true. cats. That's, that's about it. I guess that's, that's why rats are the enemies here. We got a few fun yes, new baddies rats. here. Charging Chuck is back, the football player who threw baseballs in Mario World. He also I kicks guess the baseballs are from, but they aren't from him. The amount of power-ups <laughs> is insane, yeah. like more than any other Mario title. The main headliner is the Super Bell, transforming you into Cat Mario. You can climb up walls, pounce, claw enemies. I'm really happy they put in a power-up that's main gimmick isn't just you can fly, because most of the time that's what new Mario power-ups yeah, are. Yeah, Cat Mario true. allows you to climb up any surface, which makes exploration a treat. 
makes me wish it was in a different game. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it works brilliantly in this game, but could you imagine this in Super Mario Odyssey, Sunshine 64? Games that have massive lived in worlds to explore. That's this true, yeah. a killer in those titles. Here, it's a great power up that you pretty much want on you at all times, but I just feel like the level design could have lent into it that much more. Then there's mm. the Double Cherry, another nod to Super Mario Brothers 2, but these duplicate your character, giving yeah. you up to five clones if you nab enough cherries. So these are awesome. It is so satisfying to run around with five of your character fluently. There's some really smart uses of the power up, like this area where you want to position a clone on top of a block and have another hit it to get a collectible. But exactly, then you yeah. have the number pads, asking you to bring a certain number of clones to them. These kind of just feel like the character switches to me, like bringing mm. four clones to a pad is almost the same as saying, get to the end with the fire flower. It's still obviously harder to yeah. bring a bunch of clones to the end of the level, considering you can lose one so easily. I think I'm really nitpicking here, and that's just because this is such a fun little power up, and I wish they did more with it because it's pretty much just used for these number pads, which is yeah. fine. Of course, in multiplayer, these things don't matter because you just have human players replace the clones, but this is such a fun idea I wanted to see more uses for. Also, the power ups in 3D land return here, including the fire flower, boomerang mm. flower, tanuki leaf, invincibility leaf after dying a certain number of times, Ugh. the star, mushroom, the mega mushroom, which is a bit of a cool little surprise. Doesn't yeah. appear much, and it's just kind of here because kids like when you grow big like this. Uh -huh. I should know. I was a kid. Yeah, when this appeared in New <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I haven't heard of ecstasy. Now it's like, oh, he's big. Okay, I'm just gonna walk right over all the yeah. level design and not play it. Yay. To me I remember when that game first came out, I thought it was cool that finally Mario had a power-up that made him really giant. I always thought it would be kind of a cool idea. But then... In practice, I found that it actually kind of sucked. Most of the time, you didn't have much use for it. To be fair, I think when they use the Mega Mushroom in 3D World, it's actually in smart areas. There's this ghost ship that really only makes sense with the Mega Mushroom in mind. The propeller box from 3D Land returns on top of various other boxes. And question blocks can get stuck on your head, and you get loads of coins from running around. Cannon boxes shoot cannonballs out. Light boxes shine light on enemies susceptible to it. You can hop into a Koopa shell and jam around in that. Goomba masks <laughs> stop enemies from charging at you. There's so much stuff here. And that's not even counting the piranha plant item which you can hold as it chomps away at stuff in front of you yeah. if 3d world is anything it's not running out of ideas mm -hmm. i think the amount of power-ups is one of my favorite things about this game a lot of mario yeah. titles have that one power-up you always want to have while this one every single one is very warranted and mm -hmm. i'd rather take the cat or tanuki suit in almost any instance and yeah. something like the boomerang flower feels so much more useful here than it did in 3d land there mm -hmm. are a few stages where you flat out need the power-up to grab a green star or stamp like you have to throw a boomerang to grab it and that's awesome of course, there's also the stages that require the gamepad. Most of the game, you can just use any controller you please, but a select few you need it for microphone support. The touchscreen, gyroscope, all the Captain Toad stages require yeah. it. And they use it in such lame ways, like touch this block to have it come out, blow the microphone to get rid of the enemies. You can use it during standard gameplay to Cheat. The gamepad support <laughs> <Cheat>. is pathetic, <laughs> and it's made even more so because it's required for a few of those levels. I don't dislike these levels at all. They're perfectly fine. I just think the ideas they had for this thing were lame as hell. Like, mm -hmm. you can hold the enemies in place. You can uncover secret blocks by rubbing around them. Yeah, the game also pretty much tells you when a secret block is nearby, so it's pretty much pointless. The boss fights are definitely a weak point here, too. They're all a bit overly simple, and it's just jump on them. Yeah, it's Mario's yeah. thing, but other boss fights in the series have been incredibly creative compared to these. I mean, I mm -hmm. like their designs, and the Histocrat boss fight is alright. You just climb up and stomp on them, but yeah, really boss blob, hit him on his head. King Kathunk, hit him on his head. Boom, boom, pom, pom. Same story. Bowser's are unique. Two of his, he's in a car. It's the baseballs all over again. Like, cool, but why? You just hit the <laughs> bombs back to him. Everything's more simple here, which isn't bad, but none of the bosses leave much of an impression outside of their character designs. Now, the seventh world is Bowser's castle themed so much so they yeah. replaced the number seven math is f***ed. at the end of the boss here you rescue the seventh sprixie princess with them doing the classic fake out mario games can't get enough of pretending i don't understand what'll happen next what i do really like how the red screen denoting the end of the level gets peeled back with bowser returning capturing all the fairies and using their power combined to create bowser land this is the coolest part of the whole game. It looks awesome. It does show a 3D world has any It makes theme. me think of Robotnik it's, Land. <laughs> it's, it's definitely the only prominent theme throughout, and Bowser Land rolls with so it. Really but like the cat though. suit, it just makes me wish this was in a more open Mario game. Exploring a Bowser theme park would be so cool. It would be, the final yeah. boss is easily my favorite level in the game. 
Bowser uses the power-ups against you, becoming a Meowser. Using the double yeah, cherries that to take multiple later idea. on. Everything about this stage is incredible. It feels epic on a level that 3D World doesn't really touch outside of this yeah, one the moment. Cherry, it all the comes bell. together. I love the big music cues when you hit the POW blocks and when you save all the fairies and those credits roll. It feels like you just experienced history. I mean, the music <laughs> always definitely helps. This is easily yeah, one really of, good if music. not the best Mario soundtrack of all time. It's really leaning into that big band style. It works so well it and does. honestly makes certain stages an major game. standouts here. Afterwards, you unlock World Star. And here we have some of the most creative stages out there. One where you're chasing after the flagpole, one that yeah. acts like a top-down shoot-em-up, a throwback to Mario 3D Land, and after the second stage, you unlock Rosalina as a playable character. Yeah. Being the slowest, but having the spin from Mario Galaxy acting as not only an attack, but a double jump as well. A new mm. power-up is also available in some levels here, the Lucky Bell, a variation of the Super Bell that turns into a golden statue producing coins during a ground pound, which is... <laughs> very much like the tanuki suit you got in the post game of mario 3d land wow on top of this okay. after beating <laughs> the final boss the luigi brothers minigame is unlocked on the title screen 3d World oh, was I, released I during the year of luigi that was before Nintendo that the stock hit an all-time low because of that <laughs> many stages have a hidden 8-bit luigi damn in them. luigi they don't do anything but that's very in line with how 8-bit luigi's act luigi brothers <laughs> is a rom hack of mario brothers on the nes but Except with both characters as luigi it's actually yep. unlocked from the get-go if you have new super luigi you saved that on your system yeah it's it was unlocked from the get it was unlocked from the get-go for me and and now I know why. It was because I had the new Super Luigi U already, which I have some videos of, but not very many. Games do this kind of stuff, but come on. It's Luigi Brothers, okay? I have better things to talk about, like World Mushroom. Afterwards, you unlock yeah. World Mushroom and Flower, which house remixed versions of the previous stages. And once you get every green star, every stamp, and get to the top of every flagpole, you unlock World Crown, where the toughest stages in the game reside. A 30-star Mystery House Marathon, one last Captain Toad level, and Champion's Road. Basically, the final exam let me go back, sorry. For the NES, but with both characters as Luigi. It's actually unlocked from the get-go if you have new Super Luigi, you save yep. that on your system. It's a cute inclusion. I love when games do this kind of stuff, but come on. It's Luigi Brothers, okay? I have better things to talk about, like <laughs> World Mushroom. Afterwards, you unlock World Mushroom and Flower, which house remixed versions of previous stages. And once you get every green star, every stamp, and get to the top of Jeez. every flagpole, you unlock... World Crown. Yeah, I never got to the, in the World game Crown. A 30-star Mystery House Marathon, one last Captain Toad level, and Champion's Road. Basically, the final exam of Super Mario 3D World. I mean, I want to get to that. That's right. I can fuck anybody I want. I just choose not to. To play 100%, 100% <laughs> the game, you have to beat He's every asexual. stage as every character. Fuck you, Nintendo. Once you clear every level as one character, you get a stamp for said character. And I did it as Mario, and I don't care. I 100%ed this game, and I'm proud of it. Well, that's Super Mario 3D World, and I think my main problem with it initially was that it wasn't this big, epic, genre-defining title, which no, it definitely really wasn't that. needed at the time. It was just supposed to be a very good, typical Mario platformer made for multiplayer. But there's nothing wrong with that. Today, yeah, it's a Mario good game. Mario series has an ability that many other game series would kill to have, and that's the ability to make each game so different from one another, but at its core, they all feel like Mario games. Super Mario 3D World is a much more typical Mario game. It's much more back to basics than something like Super Mario Galaxy, but that doesn't yeah. make it inherently worse. No, it does not. These two really just compared to each other. But Nintendo messed up because they practically forced us to compare the two. 3D World was the yeah. only 3D Mario on Wii U. It was the system's flagship Mario campaign. And this yeah, style too of 3D bad Mario it was. on a console it's still good though. makes sense to ease 2D players into regular 3D Mario games. But there wasn't a regular 3D Mario game to ease those players into on the system. Thus, Nintendo made me look at everything and go, well, the GameCube had this big adventure, yep. we had these epic campaigns, and the Wii U only got this, which is more 2D Mario than 3D at times. It kind of reinforced this feeling that Nintendo wasn't trying as hard as they should have with the Wii U. They were playing it safe, especially in 2013 when this released. Instead of this being just a really cool 2D, 3D Mario hybrid with awesome multiplayer, they forced us to compare it to games that it really didn't deserve to be compared to. Because when you look at this as the Wii U's defining 3D Mario moment and compared to the other Nintendo system's defining 3D Mario moments, it looks much more basic and simple compared to the more open 3D Mario games. Yeah, Back I agree. in the day and many times, it felt like Nintendo wasn't trying with this game, and that wasn't the case but it just felt like they made a mistake releasing it at the time that they did. 
However, soon after, we did get a return to the more open 3D Mario yeah, formula. That took four years. And that made me look at 3D World in a different light. Super Mario Odyssey was everything I wanted in a new 3D Mario game. Rich open environments, I hope to play that game someday. mechanics and ideas, genuinely putting <clears throat> the Mario series forward. And when I got this style of Mario in 2017, it made me appreciate 3D World a whole lot more. It no longer feels like it's lacking because it's something it's not. It now feels like the fun multiplayer Mario it was always designed to be. We have this big open game now. We have these rich non-linear worlds to explore. Super Mario 3D World isn't that. And that's okay! It's mm -hmm. different, and it's really fun because of it. As the Wii U's only 3D Mario, it's underwhelming. There's no denying yeah. it. But as a video game in the grand scheme of Mario, I now look at it for what it truly is. A masterfully designed, <laughs> undeniably fun obstacle course platformer. Which is what Mario has been since the very beginning. If anything, Super Mario 3D World is a perfect, classic-styled entry in the series. It's a shame I saw it as anything less than that. But thankfully, it's only gotten better with age, and no time was it easier to appreciate than in February 2021. You know, when Nintendo started porting every single one of their Wii U games over to the Nintendo Switch, many pointed to Super Mario 3D World being an obvious choice, yeah. especially considering Super Mario Odyssey was on the platform and New Super Mario Bros. U came over as well. I with hated the, World the release the Switch, of New Super Mario Bros. U. The area of Mario covered, the 2D games, the in-between. I mean, I got New Super Mario Bros. U on launch day for the Wii U. And then New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is, re is a port of the Wii U game on the Switch two year, two and a half years after the Switch came out. And it's really literally the same game, except you got Toadette, who can turn into Peachette. And uh, you got that stupid... Uh, you, 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 uh, in the New Super Mario Bros. U levels, you can actually play as Nabbit, when Nabbit was only playable in New Super Luigi U initially. But, yeah, it's basically the same exact game. It's like, I just wish they would have just made it... I, just, I, just, I am getting a little annoyed with all the Wii U ports to Switch. I guess, being that I did play... I, did own, I do own a Wii U and play a lot of games on there already. I do find it annoying that they're porting a lot of games over to the Switch. I actually seriously thought they were going to port Super Smash Bros. for Wii U to Switch. I actually thought they were going to do it, because that would have been an easy one from the port, too. Because, I'm um, obviously, it was the laziest name. I mean, how could you not come up with a name for the four Smash Bros? Super Smash Bros for 3DS and Super Smash Bros for Wii U. Like, come on, what are we, stupid? We know what system it's for. Come up with a better name. You know? Um... But I actually seriously thought they were going to port that game over and call it Super Smash Bros. for Switch. I, I, I seriously thought they were going to do that. I'm so glad they didn't. I'm so glad that they came up with a new Smash Bros., Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which, I mean, came pretty quickly after the fourth game, actually. It, only four years. I mean, granted, yes, Melee came out on the GameCube two years after the original on N64, but after that, there was always several years... They were always many years apart. It took another seven years for... Brawl to come out for Wii, despite there being an E3 trailer like in 2005 or something. Um, in six years, in 2014, there was Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, and then in just four years, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate on Switch. But anyways, yeah, it, um, I'm glad they didn't port that. Which reminds me, they ported Mario Kart 8, which came out for the Wii U in 2014. They ported that to the Switch as a launch title in 2017 as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Can they please release a new Mario Kart on the Switch? Like, seriously? Why isn't there a new game? The, the, uh, ever since Super Mario Kart came out for Super Nintendo, every Nintendo console that came out after that was a success, that, you know, besides the Virtual Boy or whatever, but every console that came out after had a new Mario Kart. Even the Game Boy Advance did with Super Circuit. Um, why has there not been a Mario Kart 9 on the Switch? Why is it just a port of the 8th game from Wii U? Come on. Come on, Nintendo! I've been talking long and I must continue with 3D World. Between 2D, 3D games and the flat out full 3D ones. That lack of a full 3D one on Wii U made 3D World feel so lacking originally. This could be the game's big.
But thankfully, it's only gotten better with age, and no time was it easier to appreciate than in February 2021. You know, when Nintendo started porting every single one of their Wii U games over to the Nintendo Switch, many pointed to Super Mario 3 uh, World yeah. being an obvious choice, especially considering Super Mario Odyssey was on the platform and New Super Mario Bros. U came over as well. With 3D World on the Switch, you'd have every area of Mario covered. The 2D games, the in-between 2D, 3D games, yeah. and out full 3D ones. That lack of a full 3D one on Wii U made 3D World feel so lacking originally. This could be the game's big chance. But each year came in one and it felt like they're reporting anything but 3D World. Tokyo Mirage Which Sessions. Mind. Yeah, sure. Captain Toad, the follow-up to 3D yeah. World, got ported first, and they removed levels that were from 3D World from the game and retconned it being a 3D World prequel. The Switch uh -huh. version's supposed to be a prequel to Super Mario Odyssey now. 3D World made it into Super Mario Maker 2 as a game style. It felt mm -hmm. like the game just made sense awesome. for Switch. Yeah. Which is why I predicted it would never come over. This is Nintendo, <laughs> all right? The lack of sense makes more sense sometimes. Thankfully, yeah. I was proven wrong. A part of the Super Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Direct, the port was revealed alongside a new sub-game included in the package. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. I don't understand the trend of putting plus in games titles now. It felt like a lot of games started putting a cross in their title to denote crossovers, and now Nintendo's trying out plus signs. Mario yeah. plus Rabbids, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions, Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. It's actually quite odd that this naming convention perfectly follows the Mario and Luigi remakes on 3DS. The trailer didn't show really anything new on the front yeah. of 3D World, but later on people discovered the character's running speed was increased dramatically, and there would be online multiplayer. That's actually pretty cool. Why wasn't this in the trailer? Nintendo does this odd <laughs> thing with a new <laughs> out, and in place they go, oh, Luigi's funny. On top of that, Bowser's Fury was shown to be a dark, large, open area taking place in 3D World's engine, which is exactly what I wasn't expecting. I was anticipating the bare minimum for this board. I mean, maybe a new character? A new world of levels? That would've been fine. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe got away with doing the bare minimum. That's it like did, the yeah. worst Switch port they could've done. They added yeah. a new character, but removed modes. The ability to play is just Mario, Luigi, Blue Toad, and Yellow Toad. Now one of the characters has to be Toad dead, and she has an unfair advantage in the form of extra abilities. Plus, the game put in this new control mechanism where double tapping the jump button makes it twirl in the air, and that led to countless mistimed jumps where I was trying to jump, but the game registered it as a double jump and you can turn it off but only via a cheat code i don't like this version if anything the wii u one's okay, better so to at the very least see 3d world double jumps are hard easy to prevent it was promising and later down the line on january 12th 2021 the bowser's fury trailer was revealed showing how exactly this part would operate with a full overview trailer for the full package released the very next day super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury released a month later on february 12th 2021 for the nintendo switch alongside a mario themed switch and two 3d world Amiibo. The reception wasn't as high, but I'm sure that's just because the hype wasn't there as much. This yeah. It's just a port after all. I think 3D is. World is great, but a 10 out of 10 seems a bit high, and I think fans were eager for it to save the Wii U, and playing it back in November 2013, I think we were all excited about it a little more for that very reason. Mm -hmm. This version, I was definitely picking up. Not only did I want to see what Bowser's Fury was all about, but see how 3D World made the jump to a non-Wii U being. Well, they had mm -hmm. to remove a whole new world from the box, considering the game is 8 years old. So, yeah. moving the game up, <laughs> pick between 3D World and Bowser's Fury, showing these are two completely different beasts. Let's go for 3D World first. It's 3D World. But now with weird looking menus. <laughs> and I don't know about this parenthesis selection thing. It just looks off. They actually went in and overhauled a few UI elements, specifically ones that didn't really need an overhaul. Pretty much the entire character select screen is different. It may not look different, but they changed the sizes of icons, text, fonts are different. Even the back button is in a different place. They did a similar thing with New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, randomly changing some UI elements you would never really think about changing. The game now runs at a higher resolution. Oh yeah. There's a few highlights from my Twitch channel, because when I first started doing Twitch in 2018, I was streaming exclusively to there, just like when I first started streaming, I was streaming exclusively to YouTube in 2017. Nowadays, I make my attempts to stream to multiple places at the same time. Um, but back when I was streaming just exclusively to Twitch, my friend John made me and my friends Kyle and Kevin, all four of us, play New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe when none of us wanted to play it except John and there are some hilarious highlights of it I'm a big time Mario guy so I know what I'm doing John's a big time Mario guy and he owns that game he knows what he's doing Kevin didn't give a shit he tried his he played his dab it and tried his best to just get us all killed every time it was hilarious Kyle just sucks because he's not good at video games um 
with with few exceptions. If we start doing day by daylight soon, he'll actually kick my ass at that game. But um, anyways, it was a blast. And there's even this part where Kyle just there's highlight I made where Kyle just keeps pouring the salt in the open wound, just keeps insulting John, and it's it's made for laughs, but like it's it's hilarious. Anyways. I've been meaning to actually post those on YouTube. Maybe I'll actually do that now that I'm thinking about it. Solution, which isn't really a major enhancement. It's not like the game looks significantly better, but it does look sharper and colors pop even more. It's Fury showing these are two completely different beasts. Let's go for 3D World first. It's 3D World, but now with weird looking menus. Man, I don't know about this parenthesis selection thing. It just looks off. They actually went in and overhauled a few UI elements, specifically ones that didn't really need an overhaul. Pretty much the entire character select screen is different. It may not look different, but they changed the sizes of icons, text, fonts are different. Even the back button is in a different place. They did a similar thing with New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe, randomly changing some UI elements you would never really think about changing. The game now yeah. runs at a higher resolution, which isn't really a major enhancement. It's not like the game looks significant significantly better, but it does look sharper and colors pop even more than they did on Wii U. Much like with the UI elements in the menus, the ones during gameplay have been altered. They removed the time sign from coin and live counts. Good. In addition, the UI <laughs> as a whole is smaller, with the item in reserve icon being completely different. This time you hit up to access it. The game saving after every level is now done pretty much entirely in the background. Back on Wii U, it would pause and make you sniff. This is something I didn't realize until playing for a while. It may not seem like a big deal, and the load times weren't at all on Wii U, but this adds up a ton. But when you start playing the game, the biggest change becomes painfully obvious. There's no gyro camera. Now, the characters all have increased speed, 40% faster than on Wii U. This is blazing fast running speed compared to what I'm used to, and it makes the game feel radically fresh after playing on Wii U. I personally mm. never found the original game to be too slow, but the new version definitely makes it feel that way. Though the increased speed can be a bit jarring, and I will say the original feels a bit more natural. It's more fun now, but just running and jumping on a staircase feels a bit more clunky compared to on Wii U. There, the platforms were designed with this certain top speed in mind, and now when I try to jump up a few platforms and not lose speed, it's much harder to. But it's not really a big deal, it's just something I noticed. And another thing I'm gonna have to point out, as a result of uh, the increased running speed, it'll be easy, it, it may, it'll make the game easier, of course, that's probably the point. It makes it more fun. But the time limit, it'll be easier to not run out of time. I mean, come on. That just makes the game way easier. I mean, the slowest character in the game on Switch is faster than the fastest character on Wii U, which just shows how significant this change is in the game scheme of things. And it makes for a more fun experience overall. We got some new moves. The mid-air roll from Super Mario Odyssey is here, which is a godsend. I cannot tell you how many times this move has saved me, hitting the crouch and run button in the air. Oh, they probably add that because of increased speed. A gross jump. I love it. Something else from Odyssey is slamming down warp pipes. If you crown mm. pound above one, you slide right in, which doesn't have much of a purpose other than pure pleasure. If you die in the Wii U game, any green was. stars or stamps you collected would be lost if you didn't collect them prior to hitting the checkpoint flag, and you'd have to get them all again. Now, it remembers if you nab them, so if you get them once, you don't have to worry about getting them again, you just have to beat the level to fully net them. Still doesn't give you the ability to swap characters between lives. Oh, come on, really? That on the fly, that would've been nice. But, what about the levels that use the Wii U gamepad? Say what you will about the perfect game, it doesn't use this. So originally, a few stages used the touchscreen and microphone. The Nintendo Switch has a touchscreen, it's only accessible in portable mode though. And it has absolutely no mic, which I find incredibly strange. Are the microphones like what was used on the DS, 3DS, Wii U? Are they really that expensive to include on Switch? Like, I get that Probably the blue into the mic mechanic attracts an audience you don't want anymore, but just including it for compatibility with older games would have been nice. I guess the reasoning is since the Switch would be in the dock, you'd have to implement the microphone in all the controllers, and then on top of that, if they'd want to implement more legacy gimmicks like a camera again, uh, now it would have to be on the controllers. If you'd want a touchscreen during gameplay, well, just buy the damn Wii U. Nobody else did. These levels in uh. World on Switch have been altered slightly. Platforms that would require you to blow into the microphone now just move automatically, which which kind of just makes them feel pointless. There's not much challenge here. Yeah, at least with these stages on Wii U, the challenge was endurance. For the touchscreen, you can still touch the screen in handheld mode, but in TV <laughs> mode, 
Hello, old friend. Hitting the R button displays a gyro cursor in which hitting the R button again registers as a touch. So that's how we do touchscreen support, which is far better than how Captain Toad on Switch did it. The cursor was on the screen the entire damn time and it was blinking. 3D World, you click it in and eventually it goes away. But this allows all players in multiplayer to use the pointer. Everybody can click R. I've read our rights. Only the gamepad <laughs> player could originally do this. And now it feels much more fair while also feeling much dumber. These levels were already pretty bogus on Wii U. Now they just feel completely stupid. Like imagine <laughs> the kids playing this game. They haven't even been taught the letter U, let alone the Wii variant. They're going to play the <laughs> stage and just be like, why do I have to do this? However, <laughs> it is an upgrade in my opinion. It was a necessary step to take ensuring the game to live in anything but a casket. But this upgrade mm. helped another element out. The Captain Toad stages are now multiplayer. These used to be single player only levels, which worked based on how they were designed. But when the rest of the game was multiplayer focused, it felt odd. See, that's why yeah. I said these stages felt like they were from a different game. At the very yeah. least, I think if the other players could control cursors or something to interact with the level, that would have made sense. But mm. now, straight up, you are all control toads. The courses weren't designed with this many players in mind, but if you're playing multiplayer, this is obviously a huge improvement. But those toads are the only new playable characters, which seems like a missed opportunity. There's mm. really no true new content included in 3D World. It's mostly just improvements to the core gameplay. Pauline was a character I thought would work the best as a six playable, since Rosalina was included as a reference to Mario Galaxy using Mario's attack from that game. I thought Pauline could be a reference to Mario Odyssey and she could fling a hat as her special ability. Some I, I guess she could fling a hat, but like, why? Like, what does Pauline even do? Pauline was the original damsel in distress in the 1981 Mario Arcade Donkey Kong. She would be the damsel in distress in the 1994 amazing Game Boy game Donkey Kong, which is more just the arcade. It's a bunch of puzzle levels, which are amazing. And uh, she, you had to rescue her in... Uh, I, in Mario vs. Donkey Kong, did you have to rescue her? I don't remember. But in the second one, Mario vs. Uh, for Game Boy Advance, but but in the second one for DS, Mario vs. Donkey Kong March of the Minis, which is an awesome game, the first Mario game I played that you can actually make custom levels on. Um, but uh, that game, Pauline, is the damsel in distress. So basically, she's never ever been playable except maybe like in Mario Tennis Aces or something. So what what exactly can she do? Then again. Um, Rosalina was added as a playable character in Super Mario 3D World, and there was nothing known about what she can do. And they gave her that, you know, Super Mario Galaxy spin, and then she was added as a character in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, so... Although she has a lot to work with the Lumas and stuff like that, so I just don't get, I just don't know what's unique about Pauline that she could be a playable character in a Mario platformer. Like, what, what, what would she, what would be different about her? I, I guess like Scott said, yeah, maybe she just throws a hat like Mario did in Odyssey, but that doesn't really make any sense. At least with Rosalina, you know, shooting, uh, using a Loma or the, the galaxy jump thing, it makes sense. People thought Toadette or Galaxy Daisy would attack. be playable. Yeah. Well, turns out we were born in the Toad with Glasses timeline. Weirdly enough, <laughs> we have one new power-up locked behind the brand new Amiibo support. Alongside the game came Cat Mario and Cat Peach Amiibo, based completely off of the promotional art for the game. This seemed like a pretty unnecessary addition, but it does kind of yeah. make 3D World feel rounded out, finally becoming the game it was always meant to be. I mean, it launched a year before Amiibo. It's surprising the original wasn't updated with support. Scanning Cat yeah. Mario will get you the Invincibility Bell, a variant of the Super bell that just makes you invulnerable to enemies. Cat Peach will just give you a random power up, which also could include the invisibility bell, so this is for work, this is for pleasure. Random amiibo used will give mm -hmm. you a one up, and Mario series amiibo will give you a star. Was it worth it? I'm sure Nintendo sees amiibo as just excuses to sell figurines at this point. They're not really trying to give them legitimately cool features. Sometimes they accidentally put cool features behind them, and I don't think they meant to. They keep <laughs> flip flopping on them. One year they're barely utilized, the next they use them all the time. And 3D World's amiibo support? is pretty much non-existent. I'm sure some people didn't even know it had Amiibo support. I didn't Amiibo's know functionality did. is gone, meaning you can't make posts based on the level you just played, and ghost meets don't appear. That is a bit of a shame, as it devalues the stamps a bit. It doesn't really matter, though, because stamps are fundamentally just green stars with fun art locked behind them. But here's the thing. The stamps have been fully colorized now, which isn't something I was expecting. And you can use them in the game's photo mode. You can pause at any time, line up a shot, and you can flash the stamps in the environment. I mean, I don't use this. I'd rather vandalize actual walls. But it's a <laughs> 
small repurposing of the stamps and the fact they went in and colorized them all is really cool to me. They went above and beyond here to ensure this version of 3D World is as definitive as it could be. They even remember Luigi Brothers and it doesn't look like ass this time. They used a far nicer emulator. Any NES game on Wii U looks horrendous. Here, everything is crisp and clear and it unlocks after the final boss. Even though New Super Luigi U is on Switch, it doesn't unlock if you have saved data for your system, sadly, but it's still here. And online multiplayer. Yeah. Who the f are you? Yes, you can play a local game with everybody That's the on one thing that tempted me to get online. this game, but I haven't it gotten it. It would have been nice if you could have played with random people, but since 3D World still doesn't have free-for-all multiplayer modes where you just jump in, play a few stages, and boom, see who wins, this makes sense. That still would have been a really nice addition. I mean, New Super Mario Brothers U has modes like that, so come on. Well, the online works about as well as online would work for a Nintendo game. It's really hit or miss. I mean, I'm not one to be that upset. I've never had the biggest problems with online in Nintendo games. It could obviously would be far better, but it does the job. They didn't have to include it. The fact they did kind of raises more questions like, well, if you see value in this, why the hell are you making it better? But it's here, yeah. it can work, and I'd rather have the option than not. This is incredibly impressive. 3D World is basically all here and remastered to perfection, and anything taken out is very incidental. The ports like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe took out so much, while something like this shows how much Nintendo cares about 3D World. They were willing to improve so much about the game, but also wanted to keep as much as possible intact from the Wii U release. Small things like colorizing the stamps, multiplayer in the Captain Toad stages, the speed increase, it all adds up to making this one of the most impressive ports of a game I've ever experienced. And that's not even half the story. Like, Jesus Christ, I like this game now. Just stop. This release <laughs> is called Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, after all, and it's included via a separate option on the title screen. This is its own beast. It's Ooh. based on 3D World, but playing one has no effect on playing the other. They could have just released this by itself. Bowser's Fury, right off the bat, has a much darker tone. Made sure to take note of that. Good morning, pants pissed. We get a cutscene reminiscing wow. of 3D World's opening, though the animation looks a little stiffer here. The sun rises as Mario walks around and sees Tar. Good morning, pants pissed. Bowser's f***ing pissed. He's large as shit. I have full camera control. It's my grandma's worst nightmare. Uh, so Bowser's Fury uses Mario's same moveset from 3D World. You still hold the run button, you get the same power-ups, so you have more than eight directional movement and you have full camera control. It feels like Mario Odyssey. The camera control was initially hmm. set to be really not sensitive enough though. You kind of have to finick with it a bit in the settings. But yeah, I pissed off Bowser, but I grabbed a cat shine to scare him off. You're hired. Afterwards, you end <laughs> up with Bowser Jr. who teams up with you because Bowser's just too pissed. Now why is Bowser like this? What happened? Well, you'll have to go to the game's instruction manual for info on that. <laughs> the story, it's kind of there, but this is more of an experiment than actual Mario game. Basically, it takes assets from 3D World and creates an open world, non-linear platforming experience out of them. This is Lake Lapcat and it has more cat themed things than 3D World can claim to. Yet for some reason, this entire area is themed around cats. Pretty much every enemy is now cat themed. These kittens appear that all have colors correlating with the playable characters in 3D World. What does this amount to? Bullshit. I think they might be trying to overcompensate for the lack of connection between 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Like, these games have a few things in common, but at the end of the day, it just shows how you can take all these asses from one and make them completely different in another just by recontextualizing them. Plus, it used to be just for slide levels, but now she's used as a means of transportation from one island to another. Power-ups are all the same, but now you can store them and access them whenever you want, making them feel more like parts of your moveset huh. rather than power-ups. Bowser's Fury feels like the answer to my lust for what I wanted 3D World to be when it initially released. Finding three different grassy plain stages to make one big one? Bowser's Fury is basically an amalgamation of a dozen 3D world stages laid out amongst the large world map, and you have to travel to each of them yourself rather than select it on stage select screen. You have cat shines to collect, which are pretty much moons from Odyssey, shines from Sunshine, power stars from Galaxy or 64. Complete a mission, get a cat shine, and each mission is pretty similar to something you'd see in Odyssey. Usually mm. get to the end of a platform challenge, or gonna be that much of things, defeat all the enemies, etc, etc. Other cat shines you get by just exploring and finding them throughout the world. And with the help of Bowser Jr., that becomes easier to accomplish. Either a second player can control him or the computer can. You can decide how often he helps out or just flat out get rid of the kid. I opted for a little bit of help from him, mainly because I found that to be the true Bowser's Fury experience. And he pretty much okay. just found some secrets, which you can point out to him using the gyro pointer or took out random enemies every now and then. It's cool Bowser Jr.'s in this game as you two have to work together, but the story cutscenes feel really weird considering there's text and 3D World refuses to have story via text. It just mm -hmm. goes to show that these are two separate games 
games. It just so happens Bowser's Fury has the same Mario model, moveset, power-ups, enemies, gimmicks, themes, and is included in the same package. What the hell am I playing? But there's so <laughs> much this game takes from Odyssey. I mean, specifically when you get a shine, that's the damn Odyssey animation. Yeah, it the is. The user interface is similar, even the way Bowser Jr. asks for Mario's help and evokes vibes from Odyssey's opening. But Odyssey was all about exploration. I feel like the platforming challenges Bowser's Fury is full of reminds me more of Mario Galaxy and the tropical setting screams sunshine without even talking about how the collectibles are called shines. Damn Bowser's it. Fury combines every form of 3D Mario and still makes it unique. It's crazy how this is so based on 3D World, but feels almost completely different. And Bowser can be blamed for that, as every so often, Bowser's fury is unleashed. Damn! It just happens while you're playing the game. Bowser just becomes furious, and you just have to deal with it, either by collecting a shine that'll scare him off, or just waiting things out. Eventually, you'll go back to sleep. But this is such a fun mechanic. It forces you to stay on your toes. You don't know when Bowser's coming back. It could be the son of a bitch! Fury instills a certain fear in the player, unlike other Mario games. Huh. But it does get old after a bit. Sometimes, you just want to complete a mission, and all Bowser does is kind of annoy the sh** out of you. When you collect a certain amount of cat shines, you can become Giga Cat Mario, which is how you actually fight Fury Bowser, and it's a good time. Nothing that mind-blowing, kind of goes along with Whoa, the idea look that at the hair. love big. His hair is like times, Sonic, Super Sonic. Shines. I will say, at some point, Bowser's Fury becomes kind of repetitive and monotonous. Since there's multiple challenges in each little area, after you get one cat shine, normally you have to leave I the area never and thought come I'd see back a cat for the next cat plant. challenge to appear. And after a while of having to traverse water, and there's a lot of water, it can become a little tedious. But it's a short campaign, roughly three hours, and the final boss... Christ. Riding Plessy, chasing after Bowser with the rock music blaring in the background, covering elements of Bowser's theme Ooh. from 3D World. All right, what the hell is this? Is it a sequel, a prequel, a side story? Because this is 3D World and not 3D World at the same time. But speaking of the music, my God, it may even top 3D Worlds. There's so many just purely amazing tracks that just invoke a sense of joy or fear. They're unbelievable. Yes. The visuals also just look fantastic. They take the 3D World art style and make it actually appealing. And the game does that with so many of 3D World's games makes it feels like Plessy, the clear pipes, the propeller box, they feel like their purpose is finally fulfilled in Bowser's Fury. This is a fantastic little treat, an open world Mario game with basically 3D world stages as locations to visit. It's a joy to play through, <laughs> Mario, and you don't even have to like... make it. 3D world would have been just fine on its own, but what Bowser's Fury does is turn a great port into a must buy for everybody. No matter what kind of Mario fan you are, there's something for you here, whether it's the open sandbox style of games or the linear course clear type ones. 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is not only the definitive version of 3D World, it may just be the definitive Mario package. It stands toe to toe with something like Super Mario All Stars being what? a go to experience to just understand what the hell this is. And honestly, even though prior to Bowser's Fury's release I felt this way, I think it made 3D World make a whole lot more sense. 3D World used to be a bit of a disappointment on Wii U, but now that it doesn't have the expectations of being a revolutionary 3D Mario hell-bent on saving a struggling system, now that we have fundamentally all styles of mainline Mario covered with 2D, 3D, and the style of 2D, and full 3D, it's easier to appreciate this game for what it is, a masterclass in platforming. It's nothing that'll blow you away, but it's one of the most fun Mario games ever created, with little to no downtime. Every second is a joy. While it may not have the impact of something along the lines of Mario Odyssey, it definitely not huh? meant to. Not everything needs to be on that level. And considering That's true. everything this game set out to do, I think it succeeded big time. I've had a lot of history with this game, and while I flip flop between loving it and being more critical, in the end, I care about this one so much. It may not be my favorite Mario game. But as the years went on, I appreciate it more and more. But they didn't fix the poppin' in Sprawling Savannah. <laughs> you were this close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was sure a blast to watch. My goodness. Sure was a long one. Whew. I'm glad I didn't make it two hours long. <laughs> Just, uh, so far I'm over by 21 minutes. Not bad, right? Not bad? I hope. All right, well, anyway. Um, thank, you, thank you so much for watching. You see, I decided not to get the Switch port of 3D World because I just was thinking, oh, great, another Wii U port on Switch. I have the game on the Wii U. Why am I buying the game a second time on the Switch? But now I'm actually curious about 
Bowser's Fury. I actually thought it was just going to be like unique new levels in th in 3D World that weren't in the original Wii U game. But no. Bowser's Fury is like its own game within the game. It's actually kind of cool. Although he said it was about a three hour playthrough, so maybe it's not that worth it. Not sure. Um, it is kind of weird to see Mario and Bowser Jr. team up. I mean, I still remember, I mean, looking back at it, Bowser Jr. was basically the main bad guy in the first new Super Mario Bros. for DS. You see him take uh, Princess Peach away himself. In most of the boss fights, you're going against Bowser Jr. You do go against Bowser occasionally. I mean, of course, you get Bowser all roasted up by the lava, and then Bowser Jr. brings him back, and that's the creation of Dry Bowser, the Bowser that's just bones. Um, and then, you know, another regular Bowser comes at the end. It was like, eh, I don't remember the, the whole thing. It's been a long time since I played that game. So for Bowser Jr. to team up with Mario, that's just, that's a huge surprise. That is extremely unexpected. Um, anyways, this is my longest React video, but then again, Scott the Waz uploaded, I think, the longest video I've ever reacted to. I believe this video, okay, so this, this video is an hour and six minutes. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I believe it's longer than his Borderland, his Borderline video, which I reacted in two parts because I first reacted to the premiere of it and decided to stop halfway through because I had to go back to work. It was Sunday, um, which is the busiest day to work for DoorDash, typically. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, what was I going to say? Um... I mean, I was also recording the React outdoors with no outlet to plug into, so I, it's very possible my laptop could have ran out of out of battery, but I don't know. I think I had a full charge, and then maybe I could have gone all the way. And I I, I did upload the sec uh, you know second part of the video later, and thanks to Popular Man, the first video. I'm actually very thankful to the Borderline React videos I uploaded part one and two because I got so many views on them that not to that. You know, sometime after that, uh, my channel got monetized. It's thanks to some old videos of mine that uh, of gaming footage, that new Super Mario Bros. Wii footage I mentioned, but also uh, the final boss of Sonic 4 Episode 1. It's my second highest most viewed video with over 100,000 views, but it's actually the, the one that's consistently still getting watched, and that it's helped my channel a lot. And then the new, those uh, borderline Scott the Waz reacts really helped my channel. Anyways, moving on from what helped my channel, let's move on. Let's talk about Scott the Waz in this video. Yeah, you know, this really actually got me to turn my head, you know, with uh, Super Mario, with, the, with this port of Super Mario 3D World. I didn't want it because I already had it on the Wii U, and I was like... I'm getting tired of these Wii U ports coming out for Switch. Yes, I know the Wii U failed. Not many people owned it. Um, but the other thing is, these great games that came out for Wii U didn't actually get people to buy the Wii U, right? So, is there much point of porting them to Switch? But, I mean, I guess some of them are selling pretty well on the Switch. I mean, I, I think, is it Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? The Switch port of Mario Kart 8 for Wii U? The, isn't that um, the highest selling game on Switch? I think it's kind of sad that a port of a Wii U game is the highest selling game on Switch. I'm hoping it's not. Maybe it's Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I feel like that game by now should be the highest selling game on the Switch. I don't know. Maybe the numbers have changed. I don't know. Um, Super, Super Mario Maker 2 is obviously amazing. It's actually the only way I can get people to watch me stream. <laughs> I'm not big enough to actually be consistently watched, unfortunately. But um, anyways, yeah, this was a blast. I really had a fun time watching this. Um, he, uh, I liked how he talked about Super Mario 64. 
I mean, I like how he talks about the transition from 2D to 3D, going from Super Mario World to Super Mario 64 five years later. And then, um, you know, talking about how 2D was kind of left in the back, was kind of left behind, at least in the Mario franchise. And, uh, you know, Super Mario Sunshine came out later. Um, yeah, then there was finally the new Super Mario Bros. games, and then the Super Mario Galaxy games. Super Mario 3D Land, which was kind of like a hybrid of 2D and 3D, and then Super Mario 3D World, which is like a, you know, like 3D Land, except added stuff. I actually played 3D World first, because like I said, I didn't get a 2DS until later. I got the Wii U on launch day, I got the 2DS in 2014. And, uh, with Pokemon Y included. A anyway... The, uh, so I played Super Mario 3D Land later. In fact, I didn't even, I didn't even own Super Mario 3D Land. I, my exposure to playing Super Mario 3D Land, well, first time was I played a demo of it at GameStop on a, one of their demo 3DSs, but, um, my true exposure to the game was actually, thankfully, my wife. She already had it on her 3DS, and I played all the way through, you know, World 1 to World 8, beat the game. It was all, it's, it's a fun, it's an awesome game. But I, I, I played Super Mario 3D World first, so I, I guess I had a different impression of the game because I didn't play 3D Land first. So I can imagine some people being disappointed that it's too similar to a 3DS game as opposed to being this powerhouse new Mario HD incredible package deal thing, you know? Anyways... I didn't realize that Bowser's Fury was such an improvement, that, that the new port on Switch would be such an improvement. It seemed like every port was basically just the same game all over, except all the DLC that was in the previous game is already included. Like, for example, the new Super, the, the new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe um, already has everything from New Super Luigi U included. It's not s some DLC or a separate game or whatever. I got New Super Luigi U as DLC attached to uh, New Super Mario Bros. U. Um, and then w w what else was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, Mario Kart 7 Deluxe, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, is just a port of Mario Kart 8, which came out for the Wii U. And all the only difference that I've noticed when I've ever, whenever I played it at my brother's place in, up in Idaho, is that all the DLC characters are already available. Like they're already, you don't have to buy them. You you already have them. Like Link and I mean there is all they they did include Breath of the Wild Link as an alternative to just you know regular green tunic Link, but um, that's like the only. You know, there aren't that many differences. Bowser Jr.'s in the game, but there's, like, still, there aren't that many differences. Um, let's see. But it's cool to see, um, and it, it probably helps that the 3D World port came out later than the other ports of Wii U games. Nintendo put more thought into it because they took their time on releasing a port of that game. So they put more thought into it and therefore made it more of a grand port, making some changes to it, uh, adding Bowser's Fury. Um, so yeah, you know, and the online play, that's kind of cool that you can do online co-op with friend, uh, with uh, your friends and stuff. Uh, and in fact, when um, my nephew first got the game on his Switch, uh, he actually, uh, I, uh, well, he sent me a video message, actually, it was my sister-in-law who sent it. She recorded him sending it to me. And he said he was excited about the game and said, Hey, if you get this game too, we can both play together. And, you know, that's, I was tempted a little just because of that. But I just didn't like the idea of having to spend a full $60 on a game I already bought on the Wii U. You know? But uh, it just with a few new things. But at least the new things are kind of cool. Uh, admittedly, they're good. They're kind of good. It, d it did kind of make me turn my head. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Click that bell icon to add me notifications. And uh, just so you know, my channel is more than just React videos. Actually, I'll show you something real quick as proof of it. Yes, sir. Uh...
Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Slide8Fry here. I'm just going to let you know that if you want more than just React videos and some stuff that's more original, check out my Sonic Move review, which I uploaded as recent as July 29th, 2021. I put a lot of time and effort into this video. It took months to actually upload it fully. It's here. Check it out. I really worked hard on it. Plus, I got other videos uh, as well. My channel wasn't always about React videos. It used to be actually a gaming channel. I also used to have a secondary channel that has now been discontinued that is a channel full of original comedy videos, ones I made and were original. Also early this year I uploaded a 30th anniversary Sonic the Hedgehog review of the first Sonic the Hedgehog game. Now this actually is a re-upload of a video I had uploaded to one of my discontinued secondary channels in 2015, but I decided to re-upload it for Sonic's 30th anniversary this year and add some additional effects and some sound corrections and so on. Anyways, now you know my channel is more than just React videos, but I'm going to keep making them anyway as it's less time consuming and makes it easier to actually keep getting more content out there. But also look forward to some of my more original stuff as well as more upcoming movie reviews and video game reviews as well. So like I said, my channel is more than just React videos. If you want to see some more original stuff, check out. Please take a look at my Sonic Move review. Also, I do have a comedy compilation that is actually about as long as this video is. Holy crap. Um, that's of different original comedies, like the ones I mentioned earlier in that um, clip I just showed you. Um, that uh, are from various YouTube channels, including this one including Slide 8 Fry, that uh, I, I made over time from 2009 to 2020 as that compilation was uploaded in 2020. Um, so please check that out as well. But yeah, especially, I really want to get my Sonic movie review a lot more views, uh, so please check that out if you can if you get a chance. And also, thank you so much for watching my React video all the way to the end. Um, obviously, I, I love watching Scott the Waz. He's amazing, he's hilarious, he's absolutely brilliant. Like... I'm amazed of what he's accomplished at such a young age. He's 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 an incredible YouTuber, incredible content creator, obviously. Um, and I think that break he took was well deserved. Good for him. Um, I'm glad that he uh, has loyal enough fans that will stick around even if, if he, even if he takes a long break. Uh, not every YouTuber actually can attest to that some who are even who even have like a million subscribers have the problem with having uh viewers who just won't stick around if they are gone for like a month scott the was was gone uh didn't upload his first video this year until was it may or something i forget which month it was but it took several months before he started uploading videos and you know he, he maintained a loyal fan base and that's great you know um Hopefully I can maintain a loyal fan base as well. That said, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, click that bell icon to add notifications, and check out my other social medias. Thank you.